Good day, guys. Well, I've had some fun. I went out and uh, did some tests. I made a video. Forgot to turn the microphone on. Thus, actually, it just reminds me. I better check to see if the microphone is on. Yes, it is. So, hang on. I'll put this back on. Rattle, rattle. Yeah, um, I didn't put the audio on. So, all talk and uh, no talk and just say um, lots of action, but uh, nothing to explain what's going on. Made totally no sense. Whoopsies. Kick the tripod. Um, so, yeah, I just come back. I'm having a cup of coffee. I'm a bit frozen. It was uh, warm in the last couple of days, and today it was only 10 degrees. So, yeah, I'm recovering. Oh. And uh, silly me went out with uh, t shirt and shorts on. Anyway, um, on my travels, this is our. This is our um, ill-gotten gains for our testing. The first one I got is that little thing there. This I got this out at Sparrow Ground. And the Sparrow Ground has been hammered. So I got that little uh, speck. It's uh, under 0.05 of a gram. Uh, so that's um, that. If I don't put it somewhere safe, I'll lose it. And next to it, I got that thing there. It's a little bit bigger. Excuse the dirty hands on that, but uh, that is uh, for about half an hour's mucking around at its barrow ground. So I'll weigh these and see what they are. Anyway, I th I'm pretty sure that one, that one there, is smaller than my test target that I use on my wooden stick and uh, whoops nearly dropped it okay i better put these somewhere back up here where i can find them anyway um look a lot of guys have been um contacting about the modifications or the last modifications that i did and i said i i had to field test it to prove that the modifications worked now, I can tell you that they do work. They work beautifully. And I'm glad I didn't do anyone's detectors. There's a reason for it. It's because I've done some more work on this detector here in front of me. This is a different one. This is actually a customer's detector that I said, look, from, from start, I'm going to try a few little experiments. And if they don't work, I can take them out, of course, and just go back with the standard uh, um, upgrades. But on this one, I have done some extra stuff, and the results are stunning. I've got to show you this. This is, um, uh, yeah, you know, like I said, the last um, video was, uh, yeah, the, you know, that this 4500 is going to blow you away. Well, this one's going to blow that video away. This is this is getting amazing. This detector here, right? I tell you right now, I would not be at all surprised if it performs better than a 7,000, a 6,000, and a 2,300. 2,300 is not that hard to beat, but I can do it with a big coil and I can get fan. Look, I've got a 6,000 up there at the moment. Um, just, just to prove I've got one so I can test one. Uh, yeah. There we go. We got a we got a six thousand. Uh, I found a lot of stuff with these too. I can improve the hell out of these as well. I can get a lot of noise out of these detectors. I thought they were fairly quiet. They're not. I went and did some uh, more research uh, and some bit more poking around, and there's some other issues. But uh, for the time being, I'm not going to. I'm, here we go. I just nearly bowled the camera over. Sorry about that. Um, now, I'm going to turn this thing on. I've got to replace the uh, batteries in the amplifier because I left it on. 
Um, and it's gone a bit dead okay, in my battery drawer. I'm amazed I've actually got batteries because usually I get pilfered. A lot of people would probably realise that. That's pretty standard if you've got other people around. So I've got uh, some dead Vata batteries in this. So I'm going to pop them out. Or well, near dead anyway. Still works. This um, amplifier that I designed will work down to about 1.2 um, volts. But the trouble is, when you have a large sound excursion, it will go into distortion. It's all right if you have it soft, it still works. I mean, you can run it on flat batteries. That's the idea, that you don't get caught out in the field with a amplifier, that uh, battery-powered one that can go on anything, of course, um, and it starts uh, um, failing, and you haven't got uh, headphones with you. Or, if you have got headphones, it sounds all horrible. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to drink the rest of my coffee. Here, yeah, I'll turn this on. Turn the amplifier on would help. Okay. Just let that stabilise. I'll find the speaker. I'll point the speaker over here. About there somewhere. Yeah, I'm in a bit of a... Get this done quickly because I've got some other stuff I've got to do. You know, people coming around and want to pick stuff up, so I thought I'd just get this done um, fairly fast. I've got this um, at the moment, it's on Boost, Boost Audio, so any noise around the place that's going to get picked up and amplified. Oh, hang on, let's check the settings on this. Okay, I've, now just to prove a point, I've got the RX gain on this one turn to 15 so the rx gain is 15 uh, it's in normal mode you can see there okay that's me touching the wires of course normal mode um cancel tracking deep audio i've got the audio set to about 62 or 63 make it a bit more high pitch but like I say, I've got the gain cranked flat out. This one hasn't got um, variable gain. I've just ripped out the um, basically the whole input stage of this detector and I've rebuilt it. So this is uh, going to be another little eye-opener for you all. So hang on, I'm just going to finish this coffee before it goes cold on me. Hmm. I hope that's loud enough on the audio. It should be. Uh, stand up, go on. There we go. Mm. So it falls over. Fantastic. Okay, we'll go up to where the um, the business end is. Look at that. We get up on the coil. Now, when I went out, I used an elliptical double D. I should say that. Just so you don't think I've got those tiny nuggets with this. But that's not saying I can't. And I'll show you why. Okay. Like I say, I've got this on Boost Audio at the moment. I'll try and get the speaker over here a little bit closer. I'll turn the, I'll turn the threshold up. Maybe that helps. No, the speaker just wants to fall over all the time. Stay there. Okay. Okay, here we go. That tiny little 0 0.05 thing. Let's see how high we can get it. I hope you can hear it. Should be able to. Some wobbles of interference through. It's going to wreck everything, of course.
as you can see, I can I can hear it's up at twelve. Now I'll just just I'll just adjust the frequency on this. Um, like I say, I'm running this on a gain of fifteen. Right? It's a bit too much. Okay, so your audio's on boost, audio tone sixty three. I'll drop it back to sixty two. Not that, that makes much difference. I'll leave the RX gain up. There's a reason for this. There's the tuning. Okay. I've got it as high as it goes. Now, you've got to remember, I've got variable frequency in this too. Yeah. It's probably a little... It's going to be chirpy because it's the middle of suburbia. But anyway, let's see how we go. Okay, I can get up around about 11. And it's a little bit choppy with noise. It's, it's really... If you're not here... And, you know, you, you're matching the audio with the swing. It's very, very difficult to um, tell. Yeah, pushing it 12, maybe a little bit too much, probably 11. So that's that's um, probably the best I've got it in normal mode ever. You got to remember, normally in normal mode, you're around here somewhere standard. So that's way up. Uh, that's a very very tiny signal. Now, just give you an idea. I'll get this tiny little nugget. This is this is just a fleck of gold. You know that thing there. I don't even know if you can see that. It's just a fleck of gold. It's nothing. Uh, I, I really don't expect this size coil to pick that up. But we'll try it with my finger. It does. I was catching on the sticker. It's so small. It's like, it's like um, a piece of paper thin. It knows it's there, but it's a lot louder on a smaller coil, on the uh, little 10 by 5. Works a lot better. Whoopsies. Tripped over the uh, tripod again. I've got two chairs in this room and all this equipment and stuff on the floor, and it's very, very difficult to set stuff around. That uh, other little fleck there on this... Get it around about 10 or 11. But uh, just goes to prove, I mean, that that is uh, equivalent uh, performance and what I, what I was getting out of the 6,000. Um, not a problem with that. Now, I've got this thing on, like I say, it's on high gain. I'm going to turn it down. So, get up. I went the wrong way as usual. Okay, we'll put the gain back to factory default of 9. This is a first edition 4500. Now, if you can hear that, I'll just put the... That's the um, speaker near the microphone. As you can hear, it's basically dead quiet. Small target. Get up around about nine. So, uh, yeah, that's um, working really, really well. And it's very quiet. The thing I like about it is I'd rather have a quiet detector than a noisy detector any day. Because a lot of people do not realise that if you've got something chirping in your ear, 
for hours on end, what actually happens is that you'll get a you get mental fatigue from the sound, and you'll actually go over a target. You won't you won't pick up on it because your brain tunes out all this. Whoa, 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 whoa! If you hear that endlessly, what it's like? It's like if you're doing a task, and you know someone's having a conversation. Uh, in you know you can hear the conversation, but you're doing something and. You know, you may listen to it a little bit at start, but after a while, if it goes on and on, uh, you would you got no idea what they're talking about. Same with um, with uh, metal detecting or any detecting. Um, you, you know, coin, you know, gold, whatever. That uh, if you continually continually hear that woofy woof sound, like you know, if you get this in front and say normal mode, yeah, not that it's going to be that bad, but. And turn the gain down to, to one. Uh, of course, it's gonna it's gonna be noisy anyway. But I'll turn it off. Uh, basically, what I'm trying to say, if you've got a lot of ground noise, just keeps coming in and coming in and coming in, that you will mentally turn off. And I've said this before in previous videos, probably about ten years ago, that I have been out with people when I was teaching them. How to detect and they'd be going along and you know they you'd, you'd be walking with them we'd have a speaker on and they walk right over a target and they wouldn't pay attention they just keep walking and I said you know boy get walked over a target so it's uh it is common that people will um, you know just chill out and uh, not pay any attention, or probably not chill out, but zone out, probably more accurate. And you know, you're not going to get gold doing that. I had a um, what I, what I did when I uh, well done on a few occasions when I go out, and the area has been heavily done over. I I line myself up uh, where I am, and I look at something like a tree in the distance, and I actually. This is just a mental thought process, and you know it uh, may sound strange to some people who have got no idea about drilling things into their own head, so they you know pay attention. But I look at a tree, I make a line at the tree, and I and I actually tell myself that there is gold between me and that tree, and it's like a, a psychological thing you. You have to tell yourself in a way that you believe it and you try and find it. You, it's like someone actually went and planted a target, you know, small nugget, whatever, and you have to find it. It's like they've said, I've dropped it and it's there. And if you do um, detecting like that, you will find stuff that normally you will walk over. I'll tell you that right now. I've proven that many a time. You know, I've been detecting since. 1980 so you know I was, I was in those first metal detector rushes out to central victorian gold fields um you know we found a lot of gold in those days and uh you know been all over the place found lots of gold and yeah now we just uh apply the um upgrades to the electronics to these detectors and make them so much better so much better you know like i'll just pro prove a point i'll well, do this one this detector's been through the wars if have a look at this thing right well, hang on I'll, I'll take the mylars out so i don't uh stress them they do they will break but you know <laughs> that's been uh it's you know the case is all battered up um look at the back of this no, well, that's been uh, out and about, this one. So I'll put this one back in the box down there. This one is working really well. Still got some extra stuff to do, but I just wanted to get that down there. Let's say, for instance, we get a stock standard, stock standard 4,500. Sorry, 4,500. Sorry, 5,000. Good 4,500s. Stock standard, nothing done to it. 
Okay, let's let's put it on and let's see how good it is compared to a modified detector. Now you'd say to yourself, oh, it's a 5000. It's newer. Um, it should be better, shouldn't it? Should it be better? Hmm, okay. Let's turn him on. I'll just put it in the factory default settings. I'll get the speaker stick. Okay. I might have to crank the audio on this. It might be a little bit weak. Okay. Let's have a look. Normal. Deep. I put it into cancel mode. Oh, that might help. I have to turn the knobs to uh, factory default it. Okay, it's a bit noisy. It's, it's just noisy. Low gain detector. It's noisy. I will just let it do a frequency scan, so it'll pick a. Um, well, hopefully, it's meant to. It's meant to pick a uh, a bit of um, spectrum that's noise free. We'll see if it actually does. It's halfway through its scan. Now this is this is in normal factory default settings. If we ever get there, where are we? Two forty something. Still noisy. Don't know why, but anyway, that's five thousand for you. Up we go. I'll go up to the where the coil is. Oops, it's me jittering around a bit. Okay, how's that level somewhere there? Okay, turn this amplifier right up. Oh, it's actually full. I'll get my uh, stick wherever I put it over here. Okay, we'll get the 0 0.05 grammar again. Well, that's a good signal, isn't it? That's what I'm saying. How much better are the modifications? Right? It's chalk and cheese. There it is. There you are. Let's put it, I'll put it in enhance. You know, isn't enhance made for um, tiny gold? Let's have a look. Okay. Okay, that's in enhance. Hope you can hear that. I can't even get that with the, um, the mounts, level with the mounts on the coil here. That's what I'm saying. Um, you know, these modifications that we're doing at the moment, I mean, blow everything out the water. Absolutely smash everything. I, I, I can't believe it. And it works the same on Big Stuff Deep as well. There you go. I can get it at the ears. Then it dies off about there. So we, we can, in enhance, we get it at four. Ah, oh, dear me. Let's put it back into normal. And in normal, I'm going to slow as I can. So it's, it's getting lots of samples on the target. I mean, would you swing that slow? Or would you swing like this? Very wishy-washy anyway. But... So, you know, small gold like that, I definitely wouldn't use a GPX 5000, even though it's meant to be a small gold machine. Well, you know, within reason. I don't know what they call it. Um, they, they, I've got one here. Does anyone want to buy it? I'll sell it to you. Um, 
but I think I should modify it actually and uh, make it uh, a bit more grunty than what it is. That's really, really woeful. It really is woeful anyway. We'll turn him off. It proved a point. Yeah, so, you know, um, that uh, upgrade, you ask me, it's so quiet. Um, it, it, uh, it's a lot less noise. You know, like, like I've said before, you know, in my humble opinion, you know, um, these detectors in some, some ways generate their own noise internally and uh, intermod it with uh, outside noise. Probably doesn't make much difference in the gold field, but it would do in the room with uh, 50 hertz, 60 hertz if you're over, overseas. Um, you know, electrical power kicking around. But yeah, I just wanted to get um, that video up because that is a another really good example of modifications. Now, he, here's the interesting thing, right? Yeah, a real interesting thing for you is, um, you know, the the Mind Lab, the new Mind Lab detectors, they've got sealed um, input stages. The whole input stage is a sealed block. Um, I can emulate it beautifully. I can actually improve the performance. So very shortly, we'll probably have modifications out for the whole input stage of the uh, 7000 and also the 6000. But I can do the 6000 and 7000, lowering the internal noise floor, um, the stop internal noise, degrading the receiver stages in those detectors. Um, that's proven. I've got videos on that um, before and afters. You can go and have a look at them. Yeah. Um, ask the people who I did it for. They put comments there. Uh, you can ask them that, uh, you know, how good it is. So I hope that's um, a bit of proof uh, um, of the pudding. Having a look at uh, the comparison between those two detectors, even though the 5000 has. Uh, less input gain. It's made that way to be quieter. Uh, to me, it's not quieter, <laughs> right? It's not. I did a frequency scan here, and it made it went through the whole lot, and yep, yeah, it dumped itself on on noise anyway. So I don't think it it, it actually, um, you know, it it hasn't had the upgrades done to that like the others. Thus, it's going to have in, internal intermodulation, and that's what's happening. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to say too much about doing these detectors up. Like, I, you know, people say, oh, good, you know, MindLab must not know what they're doing. No, MindLab do know what they're doing. MindLab make really, really good detectors, right? They do. They make really good detectors. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't care who the engineers are, right? They don't know everything, right? You don't know everything, um, you know. Like doctors, don't know everything. But they're a doctor. They should do, shouldn't they? No, they don't. Um, and people, you, you probably know. You've probably gone to a doctor and he said, oh, you've got this, that, and the other, and it's something else. Well, same thing with detectors. Some stuff, um, very, very hard to measure, um, understand. You need a very broad understanding of the total system. You can't just say, oh, well, you know, I know digital, so I want to go and um, build the best analog input stage in the world, well, you, more than likely you're going to fail because uh, you specialise in digital. And same with analogue engineers. They will go and do something in analogue and try and interface it with the digital and completely balls it up. Um, you really need to know the digital side, the analogue side, and how it marries together. You need to know the newest technologies. You've got to keep on top of it. Like every day, I'm probably an hour or two on the computer looking at all the new stuff coming out, right? Oh, have I got some stuff which is going to be built? It's going to spin everyone right out. Um, I, I think a few people may, or go, go have a read up on the forums about something that was called the Superfix, right? Or uh, Superfix, something of that nature. 
It was a project that was probably started in about in the probably mid 1990s. Um, Ken over at uh, Ken Roberts over at uh, Finders in Denali when it was there. It's not there anymore. And yeah, they started this project uh, called the Superfix. And I remember I went there one day and it was a fairly large circuit board. It was all full of, uh, I think it from memory, it was 4,000 series CMOS chips. It was, it was like um, just absolutely packed full of this stuff. And what it was meant to do was sort of like ignore everything and uh, only provide the tar a target signal or the target signal. Um, there was some methodology to it. I I don't know what really happened. I sort of didn't pay much attention. But I, I know the gist of what it was meant to do. And I've done something very similar, but it, this actually is very, very good. I'm not going to go too much into it at the moment. Uh, it's um, I've actually got to build it properly. I've only built it sort of like um, breadboard style. And for what it is, this is absolutely cutting edge technology. All right. So we will be either doing that um, as a add-on goes on any detector. And the other thing is, remember I told you about um, a detector that's getting built, uh, a new detector. Um, it's been sort of uh, discussed. We might, or they might, they might ask me if they can build it into that detector as an option, um, like a selectable on off option um we'll see how we go on that anyway so that's where that is um yeah uh that's probably all Any, anything else i'm going to start going on about just waffle so you've seen it seeing is believing it the first one i did does work out in the field that second one um it will work out in the field too it's the same topology it will do exactly the same. Oh, I could have done it. I did hot rocks on it, and I damn well didn't do it, did I? Um, it cancels hot rocks in normal mode. Flat, flat stick game, by the way, uh, on that uh, uh, Mine Lab 11 inch double D. Not a problem. Just gone. Not there. No hot rock. And that's in normal mode. Uh, actually, how about. No, I'll, I'll, I'll just prove a point. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it, right? I'm going to do it. I should have done it. Got sidetracked, see? Pulling the bloody 5,000 out. Ah, oh, God. Hang on a sec. I'll get the same detector and I'll set it all up again, okay? I'll put, I'll put it all flat out. Highest, highest clocking speeds. Highest gain, right? I bet you I can get rid of the hot rock. You, you're going to go, what? I'll, I'll even have everything. I'll have everything up. I'll run Boost Audio, run everything. You'll think anyone who's been in this game a long, long time will realise what this stuff is, right? Like they'll they'll be able to compare and say, "Oh my God, you know, that is so much better than what we've been running around with." You know, you're all running around with Def Sticks, if you ask me. A lot of them, anyway. You really got to have some good performance, right? You know, you can't do things like going up the output power of these detectors. All it's going to do is light up the ground. It's going to make it a pain. Uh, you're not going to be able to uh, detect. Now, let's make sure I turn the oh, the amplifier is on full, but I'll turn it down because when I fire up the detector, it's going to scream. So I'll do that. Okay, I'll stand the speaker up again. Shouldn't put speakers near detectors, by the way, because they are susceptible to magnetic okay hang on a sec we've got to get around here and have a look at all the settings on this thing i got stick in the cancel because i had it on double d okay deep normal i've got it in tracking cancel and i'll turn the amplifier up full oh i'll turn the gain up full 
There we are. Gain on 15, okay. 4,500. I've got it on boost audio. It's, um... Okay, where's my hot rock? I'll have to wind this up. I'd rather you see it rather than me just say it. Okay, I'll lock that there. So we've got a little bit of noise coming through because, like I say, I've got this detector on, on its flat-out gain. Its factory gain is flat-out, so... Hot rock. I'll just flick it. I'll flick the switch back into fixed, then into tracking, which causes the detector to go into a fast track mode for a few seconds. So I'll just do that so we don't have to, don't have to listen to it do that. Okay. Okay, that, get the right switch. Click, click. I'll flick it again, just to fine tune it. Wrong switch. Try that. Still got a bit of residual there, but like I say, I've got this thing cranked up like crazy. But yeah, normal hot rock height, you know. So, under the fingers. That's got a little bit residual there, but like I say, it's a nasty as damn hot rock you can get your hands on these things. It's basically pure ironstone. You know, I've, I've done the old magnet test a million times, so I don't need to do that again. But um, the other thing to get rid of too, let's try this. Baked brick. So I'll just flick it into wrong wrong switch. That's fixed tracking. Yeah, got rid of that easy. And like I say, it's, this is on fifteen. Highest frequency fifteen. Uh, what else have I got? I'm not going to get the big, big bundle of, well, I've got, um, <laughs> I've got that iron stain in there. Should I try it? I, I doubt it's going to get rid of it. Okay, we'll just do a fast track on it again. Here we go. Tub's gonna break in a minute. Mm. There we go. I can grab it like that. I was flick it again. Wrong, wrong switch again. I'm so used to. I had the five thousand there. That's why. Okay. not going to get rid of it on the coil it's just asking way too much it's too reactive but normal detecting heights it'll get rid of that not that you're going to be detecting on piles of pure ironstone like that that's um let me say asking a bit much but um you know the kalgoorlie hot rocks they shouldn't be a problem and even so like it's on normal i mean front to enhance not that it's a good idea. Enhance loses a lot of depth on big targets. That's just standard. So anyone out there running around in Enhance like people do, you are missing out on big gold. I used to do that. It used to be a cop out because I used to be on hot ground and I'd have things cranked up and I'd be going, oh dear, it's so damn, so noisy very noisy and you know i'll say i'll flick it into enhance yeah, yeah sure you know um you'll pick up some small gold but if there was any big gold there you're probably going to walk over it 
um, enhances and the good is not a good mode to detect in. If you're going to be serious on these detectors, detect in normal mode. Uh, you are going to have to probably put up a few, um, you know, you know, ground noises of various descriptions. You've got to know what they are. If you don't like it, stay in normal, turn the gain down, right? That is uh, what I do. And because these detectors, the ones I'm doing, have variable frequency, turn the frequency back too. You know, if you are um, got these things set at, you know, 255 or whatever, um, you know, the way I've got it set up, that's running very short, sharp pulses. It's extremely responsive to tiny gold, you know, and then you crank, say you crank it back to about 170, 180, that is, will still do the small gold perfectly, uh, won't be as sharp, but it's better on medium, like a medium type of gold, um, and when I say medium, I'm saying probably, you know, 0.1 of a gram upwards, uh, and, you know, you get it back to probably about 140, 120, that's starting to optimize the detection for very large gold at depth. Um, and if you've got really bad ground noise and you need a lot of ground decay time, you then go back, say, to 100, uh, 80, depending. You know, it depends what the ground is, what, what um, makeup it is, what the uh, decay rate is of the ground. Um, you know, it might have particular. Um, minerals or salts or something in it that gives it a very long decay time so you want to crank it down i know people have cranked these things down um you know down to about uh you know 40 or 30. this is only with the variable frequency i put in this is not a standard detector i'm talking about it's not a standard detector it makes no difference to a standard detector it only makes difference to a modified detector if it's got the full range frequency mod i'm not talking you know one two three or four positions for frequency i'm talking um a whole frequency spectrum from zero to 255 has been expanded tenfold at least okay so normally you'll only be able to move it um a, a couple of um 100 hertz or so you know this thing is moving um in large uh, amounts and then people say oh but you can't use um you know the uh um you can't adjust it for noise yes you can you know you got noise on say 255 well you put it on 254 it's still up in the high frequency range like you know right up there and uh you've just changed the, f the frequency massively um if you land on another source of noise you know that's you know, just bad luck. Moving another notch, it's not going to make much difference. You can move it, uh, you know, 10 notches, it's probably not going to make that much difference. So just get rid of the noise. Somewhere in there, you're going to, you know, you've got massive uh, frequency spread. You know, you, on these, they're going, uh, God, what well, we got? Uh, range of 10, uh, geez, 10, 18, 18 microseconds of tuning range now on these. That's huge. That's massive. Uh, you're going to find, um, spare spots in there um thousands of them you know <laughs> they're going to be there but okay so anyway we're given the uh thing with the hot rock if you want to see this say um i'll just uh turn it on i'll just put it back to normal gain factory factory gain just for a hell of it okay factory gain of that's running factory gain of nine Okay, I haven't done any tuning, done nothing. It's just factory gain of nine. And I'll do the hot rock again. I don't, I'm not going to wind up the camera, but I'll just do the hot rock. I'll flick it on um, the fast normal back. One more for good luck. No residual whatsoever. I'll try the tub. I'll try this. And we'll just see how we go. I mean, it's ridiculous, but we'll do it anyway.
nearly got rid of it. So it's still an ask, like, put it into, put it into Enhance and do it. Flick it. There you go, got rid of that. The other way of doing it too, if you've got really bad ground, is lower the frequency. Like I say, I've got this thing absolutely cranked. So that's that. That's a modified 4500. What I've got to do, I've got to do the modifications. I don't want to do it to that standard 5000 um, down there. I might have to obtain another 5000 even modify that and obtain another five as a standard uh, comparison unit. Um, I don't have two five thousands, uh, which, and I, I have a, a standard 4,500, but that, that's out um, being used at the moment by someone who has uh, um, had, basically they went on holidays, the detector blew up and, uh, um, yeah, someone, someone I know quite well, so I lent on my detector, my standard one. So, yeah, and I've got a fix there one. They dropped it. I think it's got a busted screen, actually, so it's a bit sad. But we can fix that. Um, yeah, anyway, there you go. I'm waffling again. Too much um, waffle, and I've got to get stuff done. Anyway, what's the time? Yeah, I've got uh, 15 minutes. Catch us later.